pretty quiet. I thought I could do this because I've really enjoyed cars, and I found out from doing this that I like them even more than I thought at the beginning. Uh, my name is Reese Peters, uh, and I would just like to take you through a project I've been working on for the past year and a half or so. Uh, it's actually right behind me, right here. It's my uh, 1971 Volkswagen Beetle that I've been working to convert to electric power. When I first introduced this idea to my parents, they uh, were pretty shocked. They didn't want to spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on a car that might not be completely practical. So I put together a bunch of PowerPoints, uh, weighing the pros and cons of different engines and different batteries and different controllers and electrical parts and things like that. And eventually we decided on a deal where I would buy the car with my own money and they would pay for all the electrical parts of it. So I started by doing a lot of research um, about what types of batteries, what types of engines they use, and what even types of cars people use. And then I went into more specifics. Uh, what exact part should I buy? What exact car should I buy? And the first thing I actually bought was this car. Uh, I bought it off of Craigslist from a man about half an hour away from here. Uh, only paid about $600 for it, and it was in a pretty poor condition when I first got it. Didn't run, uh, the interior was disgusting. The inspection sticker on the front is actually from 2001. Uh, so it had been sitting in someone's field since about 2001. And the first thing I did was completely strip it down, uh, get rid of everything that was basically too gross for me to use. So I stripped out the entire interior, then I started rebuilding it. I painted the floor, I uh, put in new carpets and eventually new seats. Uh, my dad and I spent a weekend and took the engine out. Uh, I did a lot of brake work. Uh, of course, it had been sitting for 10 plus years, so I had to do a lot of, redo all of the brake system, uh, the electrical system in the car, the light headlights, blinkers, things like that. Uh, didn't work, so I had to replace all of the wires in the car, and now they, uh, they mostly work. Back here is uh, where the electric motor is and things, and it's attached via an adapter plate to the original four-speed transmission in the car. Uh, then over here we notice the, uh, the throttle box. It takes the mechanical, the mechanical input of me pressing the pedal down and turns it into an electrical signal, which then tells how much electricity basically to send to our little electric motor right there. Compared to the old engine that took up all of this space you see here, it took up all of it and it came up to about there or so. Uh, this is really, really small, but this will actually give you a very comparable performance to what an original Beetle had. Okay, so up front here is a jumbled mess of wires of things I'm still trying to figure out. And uh, on top of the cut in half gas tank, you'll see the two battery chargers, one for the 12 volt battery of the car and the other for the main battery pack that actually powers the engine. Uh, right in front of you there are the batteries. There are 24 of them to be exact. Uh, they're all about three volts and they put out a total of 72 volts. Back there, uh, is also the main switch for the car, uh, basically the on-off switch that completes the circuit. And there's also a controller that controls the amount of uh, amperage and voltage that is sent to the motor and basically how much the motor turns. Uh, whenever I came to kind of a point where I didn't know what to do, I was able to reach out to people in the community. All right, go forward. The hardest part was getting the electric systems to work. I bought all of the parts in August of 2014, and I had them all installed by December of the same year, but I actually didn't get to run the car until about June of this year. And that was just because I had no experience or no knowledge even of electric cars. And so there was a lot of trial and error with uh, getting it all to work in a cohesive unit without it catching fire or anything like that. So there was one time that I was working on the car and forgot to disconnect the one side of the battery pack. And I was working on the car and I actually got shocked and uh, there were sparks flying up and everything like that. And there was one time that I turned the key and I had a wire hooked up wrong and that wire proceeded to catch fire. Uh, so things like that really freaked me out for a little while and still kind of do. 95% <laughs> of the work has been done completely by me. And the only 5% of it was a friend that I would say, hey, can you come help me take the interior out, or can you come help me run some wires? And my dad, who I needed help taking the engine out, because that's not a one-person job. The old engine that weighed like 400 pounds or something like that, 
I needed his muscle to be able to help me to get that out of the car. Uh, but besides that, uh, all of the work has been done by me, really. So I've learned so much about electrical systems and so much about cars in general, just how they, how they work, how brakes work and how uh, headlights work and things like that. Uh, and that's all from just working on this project by myself. As crazy as it sounds, working on my car was a really enjoyable experience for me. Say. Wow, scary stuff. <laughs> scary. It has no brakes Ow. and it can blow up in any second. Oh, it's that's not going to blow up in any second. I'm not <laughs> playing it. All right, that's enough. It ran. Bye.